So if we want to give Henry another minute or two. I can text him and see if he's. Yeah, if you want to do that, that'd be fine. Let's see. So when I was back last week, I went to uh, the pro shop for Mar martini night on Thursday. No, wait, whatever night that is. Thursday. But it was, uh, it was a hopping evening, I'll tell you that. Thursday nights have been hopping for a very long time. Yeah, it was, we had quite, there was quite the crowd there, quite a bit of alcohol flowing too. Oh. <laughs> Somebody said they didn't know how early you'd get up to go ice fishing. I didn't get up real early. <laughs> <laughs> the sun was well long, up. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I heard we had 14 inches of ice on most parts of the lake. Yeah, it was at least that. We're, well, we're driving all over the place. Yep. Yeah, Mississippi River's open. I think the biggest snowstorm in my life was in the month of March. Probably around 1961. Right, I just sent him the link again. <coughs> I just sent him the link again. So if we want to get started, I think we'll be fine with the first part. So. I saw in, in your, your financial, you sent that data logger. So far, we've only spent sixteen hundred. That's all it is. What? Well, for some reason, I thought it was like seven grand. No. Huh. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have made a stink. But <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was seven grand for a box that's not going to help us make this. No, no, no. Yeah. No, sixteen hundred. <clears throat> so. You would have complained anyway. Probably. <laughs> when you have. That's the old me, <laughs> not the new me. <laughs> Wait All right, Ron, who, who's calling the kettle black? <laughs> oh, yeah. See this penny? Let me pinch it really hard. He was my treasurer. When I was so, Gary, you want to take control? Go, go for it, Steve. Follow the agenda. All right. So, we got every, Angie, you got everyone in attendance. I believe we're only missing Henry and and rich at this time. So first item, uh, we're calling it at uh, whatever it is, 306 there on March 4th. First item is, uh, uh, I get my agenda here. Approve the minutes of the 910 meeting. I don't think that went out any earlier in the invite, did it? Uh, I didn't have it yet. Um, okay. So, so I sent it out just a couple of hours ago. I found it in my files. And uh, I don't know if anyone's had it or anyone or everyone's had a chance to look at those minutes yet. I, I certainly haven't. It looked fine. Yeah, I've reviewed them. It looked fine. Has it got any kind of a motion to approve the minutes as written? I'll move to approve the minutes. Good to go. Second by Gary. Okay. No motion there, sir. Ron. 
Okay, we're that. Okay, so Gary and I spoke briefly last week or two weeks ago after the uh, the board meeting. I think it was after the board meeting, maybe before the board meeting. But anyway, we thought it'd be a good time to get together to at least get a recap of where we stand right now on the on the flood mitigation work, the dam work. And uh, so I don't know how, were most of you available to be on the, the, uh, at the board meeting to hear the, hear the people talking? Yeah, I was there. I rewatched. Yes, I was not there, but I watched the video. You watched the video? Yeah, I wasn't there either, but I did watch the video. Yeah. So I wasn't, yeah. there. I wasn't there and I did not watch it. So, okay. Well, it was pretty informative. It was, it was basically a, a recap of what's in the, their proposal uh, that they sent us. Uh, yeah. And people just ask questions about it. But Sean, do you want to go take us through three point, uh, paragraph three, the review of what they did and kind of give us a update? Sure. So, uh, in, in reviewing everything, I mean, Ted started and talked about, you know, what he found with the downstream and with the bridge and, um, you know, with, with his models, he found that there, there is no problem with, with the, the bridge and with the current setup, it, with, the, if we were to change to a labyrinth where and increase, uh, the, the size of the spillway. So I know Rich was asking about the, the 60% because it is over the bridge right before, um, but then it does drop down at the bridge and Ted gave an explanation of that as to why. So, so they, they only did to the first 350 feet, they didn't have to go any further. Um, and it's, it's CMT's opinion that, uh, that we're fine downstream with that. So uh, in talking to Paul Maurer, I've talked to him a few times, he's with IDNR and with putting more water downstream, is that an issue? And he, he says no, because his philosophy is if we didn't have the dam there at all, there'd be much more water going through there. So the dam's at least holding some back. So, um, so as far as that goes, I, I, we're fine as far as downstream. Um, you know, after after you go under the bridge and you start going downstream, about 300 feet, there's a big S curve in the creek. Yeah. It's going to go over that bank because it already does. It does, yeah. I'm wondering that as we blast rock out to make the uh, way wider, maybe we could take that rock and actually dump it over there. Could do that because we're going to buffer it, wall. What Kevin said is, any rock we we blast out or take out, we're just going to push it over the 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 waterfall, and then we can just get it from there easier. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that would be that would be something I would think could happen. So hey, Henry. Hi. How are you? Okay. <laughs> so um, and then discussion about the crest of the dam and what to do there, and if we wanted to. Um, you know, if, if we want to do that, uh, the two different options. Now, using clay, I think, is the, the, the better option. It's what they recommend. Uh, the cost is not all that much more uh, to do that. So um, option one with clay, 44000 uh, Option two, just with vegetation, 33000 for 11000 probably worthwhile to do that. So I think it's up to us to decide kind of when we would like to do that. Uh, not this workshop, but the past workshop we talked about, do we do that now? Do we wait till construction time? When would we want to do that? So I think that's a discussion that we should have at some point um, on that. And then, um, I mean, when Kevin took over talking about the spillway and what to do with the spillway, blasting, um, you know, and, and that, you know, really the blasting, we shouldn't have any effects. I uh, said 300 feet, 300 yards away. I mean, you, you're going to hear it, but you're not going to feel any of that. As far as the integrity of the dam, the way that they do it, he's not concerned at all about that. Um, and I think it would be a combination of some blasting and then also uh, excavators uh, tearing out and doing what they do, need to there. 
So um, that's really in a, in a nutshell what we talked about. Um, does anybody have any questions or is there anything that you guys have seen in the report that you still question or anything that was mentioned in the video or what, if you're here that you're not quite sure about? Well, yeah, what, what's some of the next steps that are required that, that was brought up at the workshop? We're gonna get a well, quote. The, the, the next step would be a survey of the, the spillway itself, and they would like to get that taken care of before we leap out. So now Ted said he'd get that to me in time for the March board meeting, um, So, which he knows I need by next week. So, so I'm assuming I'll get that and I'll bring that to the board. But what they'd like to do is do a survey of the spillway. Um, and get that taken care of uh, uh, as soon as possible. So that'd be the, the initial first step. After that, I think it's a decision and discussion. Are we, you know, are, are we good with the labyrinth weir? Or do we still have questions about that? And then which option are we gonna go with with the spillway? Uh, option one or two, are we going to widen and lower um, all the way? Are we going to widen but not lower all the way? What do we want to do with that? So that's, that's I think, a discussion that we have to have. But um, uh, let me get my uh, notes first. So on, on that thought, is there any reason why we would not for sure make it up to compliance at the 60 PMF versus the other alternate? It just sounds like we would, if we're going to do it, do it right and get it in as most compliant as we can. I, I would agree with that. I don't understand. I mean, other than cost, which cost is always a big variable. I don't see why we, why we wouldn't take the big step now, because hopefully we won't be doing this for another 50 years forever. I thought we would become compliant. If we do option, if it's option A or B, the one where we, we are 60%, where we lower the spillway floor, um, you know. Well, I thought they waived some of the compliance rules that whatever we're gonna do, they're gonna say it's okay. The DNR will permit it is what they've told us, no matter what we do, because we're making an improvement. So they're not saying you have, they're only gonna permit if we become compliant. So, so they're, what DNR is telling us is you don't have to go all the way in order for us to permit it. As long as you're doing something to improve your spillway and getting water out quicker, what does if we reach compliance? What does it do for us? Well, that's the sixty percent, which in the models, I mean, it shows that that gives us more, gives us more freeboard, right? So when we're talking about widening or widening and deepening, are they talking the same width on the widening in both proposals? Uh, hold on. I gotta look at the. Uh, no, the one proposal was taking most of it off of the west wall. The other proposal was taking that off the west wall and the east wall. That's yes, correct. That would be correct, yeah. Is there much difference in how much water can go through there if you make this wider and not deeper or do both? You mean alternative one or, or number two or something a variation of the two? Well, I'm not sure because I'm not, you know, we're so it's a bottleneck. And, but if you make it wider, if you, I mean, you can either make it real wide and not have to deepen, or you can go deeper and not as wide. And I'm not sure where we are on that. Uh, this report, the January 20, 2022 report did not have the options, but let me. Yeah, I'm trying to find it too. Give me a second to pull it up. I know we ran models for both. Right. You know, initially you said, are we uh, happy with the weird idea? I think everybody is. 
I mean, have a bowl that we're with, but it's far superior to that bathtub. Right. The other note I so saw was that there was natural erosion on both ends, east and west wing walls, if that's what they're called, already. It was indicated because it would be much easier to blast and remove because of that eroding, currently eroding walls. So my thought was, well, if they're eroding, why don't we try to get rid of the erosion part of it, both sides, or are we just putting up something that will continue to erode and have a potential problem long-term if we don't fix it now? Well, when I was up there in the spillway with them, Kevin mentioned if, you, if we wanted to keep those existing walls, we would want to repair the erod eroding areas. But he said, you could keep those walls and then put, you know, what those are, I'm going to call it five feet high. Of, should, from five of... on, you could go, you could build walls that are larger or wider out, out from that if you wanted to keep those. I think the initial project is tearing those walls out though. These are the concrete walls. Correct, yes, yeah. But if we wanted to keep them, yes, we would wanna fix the, the areas that have, have uh, started to erode away. Yeah, Sean, I'm looking at the CMT report of June 20th of 2020. Yep. Is that the one you're looking at or looking for? Yeah, I just got it. I just found it. I'm trying to understand the chart right now. Okay. Uh, Steve? Yeah. Their option number two, or their option for widening, the first one is widen it to 60 feet. The second one is widen it to 70 feet. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what I don't understand is when they're pricing this out, alternate one and alternate two, is if you look down on the on the thing for the uh, concrete for the channel floor, on option one, it's 56,000. On option two, it's 100,000. That doesn't make any sense for 10 more feet of concrete. And the same thing, outer channel walls, is both, both of those should the outer channel wall should be about the same length, but yet on the second option, it's sixty-five thousand dollars more than the first option. So th there's definitely some questions that got to be asked about the, how they're bidding this. Mm -hmm. And uh, the big thing, what they're probably going to do, is the um, the I don't know whether the bottom of the channel would be it, but the channel walls would probably be the shot creek, of the uh, sprayed concrete. Right. The rebar mounted there and then spray the concrete on it like they do for a lot of the pools. Okay, uh, another question might be asked, all this rock that they remove, is any of it possibly gonna be saleable? So we recover some of our costs? Well, we could use that rock our, ourselves. Down where the water starts flowing into the lower 80, and it goes through that S-curve. Uh, in 2017, the water went over that bank over a foot deep. And took out a lot of the crop, so we could build a berm wall there with rock. Okay, uh, if you build a berm wall there, that is an area that was already an area that would flood, so it takes away some of the crest from downstream. It's like the case with the Mississippi. The more berms they built, the worse they make the flooding situation because before the water had a place to spread out, and after they build the berm walls. It doesn't. Well, even if we weren't going to build the berm, there's places down there that 
that it would certainly be good to armor them so they wouldn't erode quite so bad on those curves. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think we are probably have enough places around the lake that we would be able to use this rock somewhere. I would agree. Yeah. I mean, this is a possibility. Yeah, I mean, I think we could use it definitely in, in many areas, or we decided we need to offset some, some costs, we could sell it. Um, but yeah, I, I we certainly have plenty of areas that could use more of riffraff. Well, once you dump it free, it might help. <laughs> well, even, even if we were to stockpile it for to use five years from now or something, and at least we wouldn't be paying to haul it in five years from now. Correct. Yeah. So going back to the cement wing walls, I mean, there's a picture here in this, in this document on page seven uh, that Sean, I think you took a picture of that shows some pretty good erosion in, in the bottom corners. So I, I, again, I, I question how long does cement last in, in this situation of water cons constantly hitting it? And I, I understand, I, I guess it could be fixed. I, I don't pretend to know that, but it looks, to me, it looks like it's eroding to the point of needing some potentially major repair. So again, again, how long does cement last? Is it more at this point in time, better to replace it versus trying to fix it? Gary, to answer your question, it, it depends a little bit on the aggregate and the mix that was made. I mean, you have uh, the uh, Panama Canal. Some of that concrete is now 100 years old. Okay. Roman concrete's over 1,000 years old. So, I mean, you, you, yeah, you, you have a point there. I mean, those walls are all coming out if we go ahead and widen. So to worry about them existing is not a major thing. Um, the And where you showed it, that was just a small amount on the corners, you know. Problem with water is if you got a crack where it can sit in and then it expands, that's what does the damage, the ice. Yeah, I would think that we're gonna end up replacing these walls if we do this right. And so, you know, I. I understand Gary's concern, but I don't, I think we're gonna solve that problem. And as far as the erosion on those walls, I think that is probably more frost uh, caused than actual water running. What function do the wing walls actually do? Is it just, is it protecting the rock, the natural rock? It's supposed to be, yeah. I thought it was to funnel the, the flow over the waterfall so that it would look nice. And keep it in the center. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it is- I'm on a meeting. I mean, that, that west side is, is the one area that's eroding the most behind that limestone behind. So it's, it's definitely saving that wall by, by having it there. Well, I thought we were talking about the, the little wings that came in oh. as opposed to the, the whole wall problem. I see. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking that we're going to do the replace these walls. I don't yeah. I don't know why okay. we wouldn't be. Right. Okay. All right. Sorry. My my mistake. So Henry, you brought up a little bit ago, you know, we need to we should question on the reinforced concrete costs. I'm just looking at the pictures, the drawings, I'm trying to understand what we're talking about here. So I see a difference between alternate two, which is of course the more expensive, they have an additional wall that they didn't have. So 70 feet by four feet uh, additional on alternative two. Now, does that equate to that much dollars? I don't have any idea. Is that what you were getting at? I guess. Um, okay. I'm not sure where you're getting the 70 feet of wall from. Uh, because I'm looking at their drawing. The, the, the slab is 70 feet wide. Yeah, so if I look at the drawing, I mean, I'm just looking at the two drawings on top of each other and uh, the existing slab right is 70 feet. And I look at the new concrete wall they're putting in 
may not go to the full 70 feet, but close to it. So let's say 60 feet by four feet. That's a new wall that wasn't there before when you compare alternative one and two. I don't know if that, is, I don't know if that justifies it. I just want to make sure, I'm just yeah. questioning that what you were talking okay. about. Okay, well, I mean, you know, these are all details that we have, can ask about. Yeah, okay. I like your map of uh, Pine Island behind you. Oh, yeah. I, I have that up here. I have uh, both Apple Canyon Lake and here, because I have a star on both of the shows where I live. So when people come here, they say, where are you from? And I can show them on the map. And then people that come down here, they say, where are we? And I can show them on the other map. So. That's what that's about. Dave, I, I think you're right on with that 70 foot. I mean, again, I'm also looking at those same picks and that, that, new, that new concrete wall is gonna be over 70 feet, around 70 feet on the east side. Right, and the, and the con new concrete slab is quite a bit wider alternative one versus two or two versus one. So I, I'm just, I know, I, I know Henry brought up the question. I'm just trying to understand where the question is from so we can understand it a little better if we ask questions of CMT, that's all. Yeah, the, the, the crazy thing is in option two, they're not showing the walls as being, well, I don't know whether it's the scale, maybe it's the scale, but they're not showing the side walls as being 70 feet long. Right. Yeah, there's no measurement. It doesn't say 70 feet. Right. It could be the scale, you know. Yeah. They're using a different well, scale. well, it does. Again, on, on, on page four that I've got this report, it shows 70.5 feet on the existing concrete wall to remain, if on, on alternate one. Yes. Right. But on alternate two, it doesn't show that. Okay, well, 70. that explains some of the difference in, in the concrete then. Yeah. Because they're using the one existing wall. Okay. But it's, it's still quite a bit of difference. I mean, you know, it is. Most houses, house foundations, you you there would you have way more than seventy feet of concrete in, and you know, they don't amount to sixty five thousand dollars. Yeah, and I don't think they they say in their report the thickness of the concrete. Maybe they do. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's eight inches or three feet. I have no idea. Right. No. For a sidewall, it's basically just guiding. So you know, right. eight inches would probably be more than sufficient, but you know, we'll, we'll see when they come up further with the plans. Yeah. Are those prices you're looking at for just the walls or does that include the floor? They have a separate plate uh, price for the floor. Yeah. It's in the attachments that that uh, came out with the meeting notice. It shows the two and the costs, the estimates, the original, the original cost. And this was from back in, what was the date of this? Yeah, June 26, 2020. Right. So yeah, all these numbers need to be re-looked at at some point. Yeah, I would agree. So another thing that's, that my, well, I know Gary has the same concern and I do too. Uh, someone brought up the question, I'm not sure who in the meeting about the concern. Well, when they first started talking about their project they put in down and I think in the Ozarks in Missouri somewhere, uh, after they put the labyrinth in, they found out that they lowered the, the top end of their lake by six inches or four inches and people were concerned that, hey, the lake's lower now. Well, we couldn't, we just can't afford to have our lake go down any, any lower. So uh, I think alternatives were brought up that you could put in some kind of a gate in the weir to help control that. Or is there another way that the, uh, you know, maybe the labyrinth weir is, is raised a few inches. I don't know, but I think that'd be a, a mistake if we ended up lowering our lake, especially well, from the north end and the end of the bays. If we know the water level is at what we call the 800 foot level, 
Uh, I think any engineer should be able to design a weir that's exactly at that height. When I saw that they wound up with a lake that was six inches lower, to me, that means there was a construction error done by the engineer on that project. Why would you build a dam six feet, six inches lower than the previous dam? Well, the only thing I could, the only thing I could think of, because we have, because we get rid of our water so much quicker and with the labyrinth in times of uh, drought, you know, right now our dam holds a little water, holds water a little longer. And if that water is allowed to go over that much quicker in a drought period, our lake levels may lower. Yeah. I mean, if our spillway is at eight, is our spillway at eight hundred feet now? The 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 top of the weir is at eight hundred. Then you've got that notch below that's what six inches lower. Yeah, and that notch right. is dam flowing even when there's a a drop going on. Right, right. Because what I don't know is. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm on lakefront and my water levels went down. I don't think this year, what was this? They were down probably four inches, I guess this year. Uh, and I don't know if that would be worse with the labyrinth or it's the same thing. I, I just don't know. I don't know the uh, Steve the engineering behind it. Steve? Yeah. Last, last September, the conservation committee decided to remove the fish gate. And the fish gate, a lot of times would catch garbage. So it would keep the lake at the level of the top of the total weir, mm -hmm. okay? With the fish gate out, it gives a chance to go down. But if you've driven, uh, if you've taken the boat close into that weir, yeah. a lot of times there's a lot of um, aquatic growth to, is pushed up against the weir. Yeah. So it slows the outflow. So the outflow's never been basically even with the lower section because okay. there's all this bunch of moss and junk in front of it. Okay. And 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 there's a possibility it doesn't get cleaned very often by maintenance. Yeah. So I don't know at the 800 level where that where that shows up on the shoreline. I, I, I just don't know what normal well, is. Th that would probably be more or less the high spot that you're used to. The high spot, okay. Pretty much at it right now. Yeah, because at the, at the low spot, uh, oh, th this is just my situation. I, 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 I can't lower my boat with a lift with people in it because the water level is too low. And I'm sure people live up in shallow areas have a lot worse than I do. I think one of the problems that you've got is when you get into a drought, you start having a lot more evaporation on the lake. Yeah. And, and the water level does go down compared to when you've got a couple of inches going over that dam and, and you've got enough coming in to keep it up. But mm -hmm. in a drought situation, and I don't think it has anything to do with it's our, our current crest or wall, or, or if we had the labyrinth weir at the same level, I think in a drought situation, you're still gonna end up with some lower levels. Yeah. And yeah. it might happen a little bit quicker with the labyrinth because it would let more stuff go over sooner, but, uh, and you'd get down to normal levels and then sub levels uh, quicker, but I don't, I can't believe that if you had the labyrinth weir setting at 800 feet, that there should be that much difference than the current one at 800 feet. Yeah, I agree. It shouldn't be different. And I think if I remember right, the whole purpose of that notch is to keep the waterfall looking pretty year round. That if we were in a drop, you can actually go over there and drop a, a two by six into that notch and block it. But then the waterfall's dried up. Yeah. And people want to see the waterfall. So they put the notch in there to keep it all wet, even during droughts. So when I look at the drawings, where is the notch we're talking about? In the On the, uh, the, 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 their first drawing, it's shown there, that, that 13.7 or 13, yeah, 13 feet, seven inches, that's the notch. And it's right basically in the center of the weir. Oh, okay, I see it. Okay. I see. The current weir. 
Yes. But that would that that whole area would be removed and we would no longer have a notch at all. Right. Correct? Yes. Yeah. We could put a notch in the 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 new labyrinth, and that way we'd keep the waterfall even during a, a drought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Yes. I think he meant I think they mentioned that. They did, yeah. As a possibility. The other thing I questioned is, uh, is there a way that they could build this without dropping the lake level? Because I think in one of the scenarios, they're going to drop the lake by two feet. That would be, that would pretty well end the season for a lot of people on this lake. We'd all have to have our boats out. Yeah, I think we've got to explore that. I think we've got to look at it. And of course, Ted said, well, there's probably ways, but it's going to cost money. But I think we at least have to look at that. Right. Um, I mean, the logistics of pulling this off, if we've got to lower the lake, are going to be incredible. And then educating the owners on, on what the lake's going to be like after Labor Day or whenever it's going to happen. If you've got a yeah, boat so out there, you off before they lower the lake, your boat's going to be there all winter yeah. and unwinterized. Yeah. And I would, I would say that anyone, any dock out there that has more than one pole, they're going to have to remove all the other poles because none of those poles are perfectly vertical. So as a lake is lowered, it's going to bind up on a, on a pole and, and twist the dock, I would think. I mean, that's, that's the experience I had when uh, we had the flood in whatever that was, 2017. Well, we just did the poles this past fall, and they actually did a brace that those those poles are in now, so that should help that some. Okay. But all the private docks will have problems too. Private docks will, yes. Yeah, so like in my dock, I'll have to pull out, I got what, six poles, uh, two-inch poles, I'll have to yank every one of those out, except for one, just so I can spin around on that one pole. That's a logistical logistical nightmare in itself. It's going to take last time when we, you know, we had that crest wall rebuilt back in two thousand six or something, and they did not lower the le the lake at the time. They thought they were going to have to, but they found <laughs> a way to do it and not lower the lake. Hmm. So I think we should be able to do something maybe. Um, you know, the, the rock ledge that's on the inside of that current crest wall is not very deep at all. Yeah, they, they said a possibility is they could build the spillway in two halves. Yeah. Right. And to me, that made sense. They could build one half and be totally dried in, uh, but they could have a removable block in that half then go over and build the other half because they've removed the block. And then when you're all done, drop the block back in. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't talk about copper dams or anything. I mean, I've been on projects where you rebuild and yeah. build the Fox River and I mean, it might cost a little more, but it's compared to that. So you just got to talk to the right they did, companies. They did it when they built the Hoover Dam. Um, yeah. Stop that. Well, Steve? Yeah. You know, down here, I, I have a wall next to the canal, and what the wall is is eight by four foot concrete slabs that they've poured elsewhere, mm -hmm. and they're keyed to each other. And they got a steel cable through the top of them, and then they pour the capstone. Okay, and that that's the standard down here. So it would be possible for them in the labyrinth to leave one section out and have it keyed right. Yeah, and slide a wall in there. Mm -hmm. That's, so that, that's that's, that would not be a big major problem. Okay. Hey, Sean, were they when we had this discussion, or when the discussion occurred in the in the meeting, did uh, they say they're going to provide any additional costs for for something like that to allow us not to lower the lake, or was that just a discussion point? We did, Bob asked it, you know, what, what options, and Ted just said there are options. They're going to cost more, but it's there's certainly options that we could look at. He did talk about that half, you know, doing half at a time. 
Um, I've seen, I've got somebody, a friend of mine that um, works in Texas and they, he showed me this dam they built that, that seemed to work for them. So Angie's knows of some ways. So I know there's things out there. So I think we definitely, we can work with Ted on it and get some ideas yeah. of what we can do and get some costs. And, uh, you know, I think it's up to us then to determine, okay, I mean, is it, is it worth it or not? But I mean, it, it seemed is. like they said they were going to build this new where I'm behind south behind right so the existing where stays yeah. during construction mm -hmm. um, how big's the pipe underneath the dam is it 36 inches yeah what i i think the pipe is 36 but the valve is 24. oops i mean you could yeah that's a big whoops <laughs> you could keep i mean you could open that and you're going to lose you know a couple inches a day off of that but i mean I mean that that's I, and I assume that during construction we would do that just to to keep to keep the water either going down or at least where it's at. So, but yeah, okay. I mean I think I, here in the initial when the board approved these projects uh, this you know last May, one of the bids that they had was to evaluate other options for that and, and the board at the time said well it's premature to do that but you know as we get into design and and all of that i think it's definitely got to be brought up again and man that might be part of design is when a discussion with ted about it yeah so when we started talking about this a couple of years ago uh, you know, we thought, I think at that time, we thought we'd probably be into this project this year, actually starting construction. We have a sense of timing now. Is it 2023, 2024? Well, now that we have a timeline or not a timeline, but at least a, a place to go, I think we can start moving, you know, with this commission and working on this. And I mean, I, you know, it's, I think it's got, it has to happen, I think, after Labor Day, um, especially if we have to lower the lake at all. But I mean, I think our goal would be that if we could if we could get this going for Labor Day of 23, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay, to answer Ron's question about when they did the, the uh, uh, poured concrete on the weir the last time, you can pour concrete underwater and it will harden. The only thing that you can't have is water flowing against it. If you just take and set the forms and pour the concrete in it, it will, it will set up in the rest. It's, there's no problem with pouring concrete underwater. It's just you can't have the water eroding it. Okay. Angie mentioned coffer dams. Uh, they could definitely do that. What are coffer dams? A temporary dam. Yeah. Oh, okay. Usually. Uh, it's channeled steel, isn't it? They slide together. There's, yeah, and but that might be well, difficult. That's... There's concrete and rock underneath there, but I have seen other like ways of doing it with different materials. Actually, too. the water in front of that current weir is so shallow, you could do it with sandbags. And that's a possibility. Yeah, too. I mean that water is only about a foot deep. Yeah. You, well, you yeah, can get, you can get out of here. Yeah, at the most, it's 18 water. inches deep. Right. Now they did mention at the workshop that we may have to take some of that out though too. Yeah. I'm assuming that would be one of the last things to do. They were talking about taking rock out in front of the work? The shelf. Yeah. I don't know why. To make the, the weir more effective is what they said. It's not the water under underneath that's the problem, it's the, the above water. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I thought the same, but it, it doesn't make any sense. When, when he said it, I thought. It doesn't make any sense to lower well, the floor. Bob, it's a case of distance. It, it, if it's shallow for 40 feet or if it's shallow for 20 feet, the water's going to flow faster. It flows fast you enough. Have some it friction, That's our problem. Yeah. So, so what was the concern there? I. I I didn't comprehend what we we're talking about. They're, they're talking that the right now in front of the, the existing weir right. it goes out almost 30, some places it might be 40 feet where it's only 
18 inches deep. Yeah. And they thought that that might need to be deepened. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember but that. He didn't explain why, and to me, it makes no sense to deepen that. It's the it's the 800 foot level that we're working with, not underwater. Well, it, he did explain it a little bit. Not that I truly understood it all, Bob. But I can see what the volume of water, the more volume we got there, the better it's going to be released. So to get volume, you can also go depth wise to achieve volume, not just width, right? So you can go down for to get the depth. So the more water that's presented to the spillway, the more water can go over to the spillway. That's how I interpret it. And also yeah, quickly, if you look at the that shelf you guys are talking about, according to this diagram, that existing rock elevations is at 796, according to this page here, which tells me it's only like four inches below the 800 mark, right? 796, and they want to propose it at 793. So they just want to take out like three inches of it. Three feet of it. One of you Thanks. is five inches, the other is five feet. Yes, sorry. Okay. I, I meant to say that's, that's, <laughs> Thank you. See, Gary, when I'm looking at the water as it's flowing towards that weir, the exit, the volume that we're worried about is the excess volume above the 800 foot level. And you don't, you don't need to remove the floor to increase that volume. It's the volume of water above the 800 foot that's the problem. And that's going to go over the weir, whether there's, whether it's three inches deep or three feet deep on the floor. Uh, Bob, we can get, we can talk to either the University of Wisconsin or the University of Illinois engineering students and get an opinion on that without too much trouble. I don't know if I want to defer to a student when I'm already paying an architect, but. The instructors are pretty sharp. I like your idea of the like the the seawalls we've got in Cape Coral, how they drop in the keyed concrete. You know, I, I would this is a side note, and this is only my side note. I would like to think that the professionals who we are hiring in second opinion is certainly never a bad right. idea. They they know what they're talking about. I like to think yep. they do. I, 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 I I'm just trying to reassure. You know, no, second I, opinion helps reassure everybody that has questions. And if we can do it for, you know, next to no cost, why not? Our first set of opinions had a bathtub wear instead of this labyrinth wear. So right. not all the professionals agree on everything. Well, well, the, the Fair Graham was doing the bathtub we were because I knew we had that shelf there and it would be easier to do. And it was a, the least cost. Yeah. But it was the least effective. Well, it, it would be effective also, but whether it's a good, I mean, I can't say who's, I don't have enough engineering to say that this labyrinth we are is that much better than the bathtub, but we'll have to see. Well, the current wall labyrinth is what, 100 feet. And I think with the labyrinth where, if you measure the zigzag distance, it's almost 400 feet, right. isn't it? Yeah. In my head, that's saying you just increased your floor by 400%. Right. And the bathtub gave oh, it also, but now the labyrinth gives it even more. Yeah, the bathtub. <laughs> 100 to 200. Right. Right. But it, okay. You, you want to look at questions. If you look at their two tables, table three and table four, it says labyrinth wall reinforced concrete, six foot tall. The one price is 79,000. The same, it says exactly the same thing for the other one, but it's 138,000. And if you look at the blueprints that they've shown us, they show both labyrinths to be the same length. Yeah. So uh, why is the one... Uh, Let's just pick the cheaper one then. <laughs> why is the one 40, 40 some thousand, more than 40,000 more? Well, you know, I mean, there are some questions here. 
My concern is still that no matter what kind of a weir we have, if we don't get that wing, those walls opened up and get that opened up, right. you, could you could have a 500 foot labyrinth weir and you aren't gonna get any more water out of that lake than we do right now. Right, the choke point. Right. Right. I'm not convinced that if we just widened and deepened the channel, if we wouldn't be okay. I'm not even convinced we need the labyrinth weir. The only thing I think we positively need is the concrete lip where the waterfall is. Because if the water is continually dripping down that limestone, like it is in the one corner, it's going to eat it away. Not in our lifetime. Well, it's already in places two or three feet back. And that was in 50 years. But that would be, that would all be covered with the uh, widening and deepening. Yes. Yes. Well, it should be, yes. I'm trying to remember at, during 2017, when the water was going over the current weir, it's still on the other side. It dropped down several feet in this pathway or whatever we want to call that area. I don't think that's a choke point. It, it, yeah, it has to be, doesn't it? I mean, with the width that it is, it's a bottom. If you do the width and the depth and figure cubic feet, uh, it, it's not that hard to figure that it's a choke point. Right, because the weir is 100 feet wide. Right. Now, and that, that spillway is not 100 feet wide. 22 feet, 4 inches. Yeah. But yet, I don't think it was ever more than five foot deep coming over the end of the spillway. Perhaps we need a um, hydrology 101 class from somebody highly knowledgeable <laughs> exactly. on figuring the water hydrology. <laughs> we don't have any numbers. The Army Corps of Engineers is sort of expert on some of the hydraulic stuff. I mean, wa water flows. I had to take one agronomy class in college, and uh, we did a thing on soil erosion and flow of water through pipes and stuff. And boy, it was a big eye opener to me. You know, we had like a two inch pipe and we had water running through it, just a kind of a pipe at an angle like this. And the water is coming out at a certain point and you just cut off 30 30 degree angle at the top of it, and the water pours out and flows like two and a half times as much. So the engineers have all this information and the data and I can't comprehend it because I'm not an engineer, but that was a sure and eye opener for me when I thought there's no way a notch in a pipe is gonna make a big difference, but it did. So when you have a weir and you have a notch and all this kind of stuff, it's, it's beyond my capability. So I, I just, if you change the slope on a pipe or what type of pipe, the material, it's amazing the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The cubic feet per second you get. That's what I was looking for is just the cubic feet per second that'll flow through here. They don't have it in the report. So that's what would be like nice to get. Water flowing through PVC compared to cast iron. Mm -hmm. So when I look at these drawings and, and ask questions, do we need to lower the floor that much? Do we need to raise it? The walls need to be separated. I can't make an informed decision. That's that's an engineer that's got to put it through their modeling to tell me that. And I either have to accept it as fact or, or not believe them because I just don't have the mental capacity to do that. Maybe instead of uh, having concrete walls and concrete floors, maybe we'd ought to have PVC floors and PVC walls so it flows through faster. There you go. <laughs> That'll never break. <laughs> Well, you, you could put PVC liners on it. Well, you, That's yeah, what you, they do on semis to, to help them slide up, stuff slide out better. Yeah. Or can you just have people sit up there with a Kansas Pam spray and just spray the walls constantly? It washes away. Oh, that's why you have to be there constantly. 
Chamek, you can do that one. <laughs> I think it kind of boils down in my mind, they give us two options. In my mind, they're pretty well saying, yeah, they both work. Which one do you want to pay for? Right. And I, I agree with what Gary said earlier. If we're going to do it, let's do the one that's in compliance. It meets everything. But getting into compliance doesn't really do anything for us. Well, it gives us more freeboard. We won't we won't yeah. go over the dam in that 500 year flood, whereas the other one we, we possibly could. Well, we never have. I mean, even in our worst flood, it never went over the dam. We always right. had 24 inches. Now with the weir, we're definitely gonna let the water out faster. So why would we suddenly start overflowing the dam? Well, because I don't know what the climate's going to be 10 years from now. Right. And if there ever was an issue and anything came back, you were not in compliance. What happens? We were in compliance when we built it. They we were. Right. Well, I mean, the, the, the crazy question with all of this is now, like you see Australia, you got areas that were almost never flooded. And all of a sudden, they're getting as much rain in an hour as they normally get in a year because of the change in weather patterns. So, you know, I wish I had a crystal ball that would say we're never gonna have a problem like that. Given how many times we've had floods in the last 10 years and given what there was for flooding along, you know, within 50 miles of us last year, and we weren't affected, but if the storm would have been 50 miles north or south, we would have been. Right. You know, I, I'm sort of thinking that this is not necessarily the time to skimp on this thing um, and have to deal with it again some other day, although it wouldn't be me. Right. No, I, I, I agree. Hopefully it's not it's gonna be something that's gonna last another 50 years, we hope. I definitely agree. Yeah, I mean, the big question comes with the 60% the of outflow being, you know, making them happy is it could make them happy, but two years later, they might change the requirements that to say it should be 50%. You know, uh, we, we never know what the requirements going to end up. So, I mean, if, if we're going to spend sort of uh, pretty close to these numbers, I think maybe we should try for the higher outflow. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have an agreement. Yeah. I got right. an idea down the road where we're actually going to make money to put money back into our association to pay for it. But we won't talk about it today. No. All right. Um, well, here, I mean, the, the next steps are design phase and then plans and specs, permit review by the IDNR, construction permit, and then a bidding process. Who does the survey? Next. That, well, the survey needs to be done, yes. Yeah. But I as mean, far as our, our, our looks and- We don't survey, hire the survey, or they, they take- CMT it. would be doing okay. that, yeah. So, so, I mean, you guys still had questions. Do we- do I talk to Ted and say, okay, I mean, let, we're, the survey, I, I mean, we're going to push that to the board, uh, but before we get into design phase, or is that during design phase when we talk to them and, and get your, your last questions um, answered? I mean, as far as lowering the lake, um, and then, you know, is, are we going to lose those four inches or six inches with the labyrinth? Those kind of questions, do you want that just dealt with in design or do you want those dealt with before design? Well, I think it wouldn't hurt to have them throw it out before design so that they can incorporate it, you know, at design. But I, okay. you know, I, I don't know what it takes for them to put their, their estimates together. I mean, they're sitting at their computer and doing it, so I, I can't imagine. Uh, I don't know. I, I think there's questions. You can throw the questions out to them that these are things that we want answers to at, at some point. Uh, 
and maybe in their design phase, they give estimates both ways. Well, we need it both ways, actually, I'd say, with lower in the lake and not lower in the lake. Being a designer, the more we know before, the beginning, better. the better. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So I was only impression the board kind of gave the approval for that survey. Well, I, I don't have a quote for it yet. So they 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 said yes, let's proceed, but they need to actually approve the dollar the actual amount. dollar amount and the quote since it's coming out of capital. So do you anticipate any issues with why do you anticipate any issues with that? I don't. No. I mean Bob or Henry, no. do you guys see? I don't see any don't issue see with that. So I mean, as long as the numbers aren't astronomical, no. Yeah, and I mean, he he, what he mentioned that the workshop was lidar, and that was like twenty thousand, but they they thought they could get away with without doing lidar. So what was lidar again? You fly over. Lidar is usually they kind of fly over and get shots. It's them. it's a type of radar okay. that they use for measuring. Uh, you see, some places they'll come in and. Uh, measure for the uh, uh, stone countertops and they'll set up a device in the center of the room and then they just move a target around. It's basically the same does, idea. Does it use radar or uh, static waves? Or... It, it's a type of radar because that's why it's LIDAR. Okay, so you want me to set up a meeting with the, with this group and then Ted? Well, the first thing we got to find out what the survey is going to cost and get that approved, right? Right. So that because survey it, was it, not a part of their original estimates back in 2020 when I look at this professional services. I don't think it was. I don't know if it was in there or not. Are we talking about? Sure. Well, I, I can't tell from the titles on this sheet. The one you sent out, because is that the land? The, the and latest one? No, no, I don't believe so. It's not. There's one item here for eight thousand dollars. Survey of spillway area. Laser scanner from the the June of twenty. Yeah. I think that's what they're talking that it was going to cost. That was eight thousand dollars back then. Yeah. Right. And I think that's, yeah, that's what I think Ted was thinking it'd be more like. So, but that's what we're talking about, right? That, that yeah. top, that item right there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, and I don't think, I mean, if, if this group's going to get back together with Ted, it's probably going to take at least two or three weeks to coordinate something. Um, it's also March, so are people going on vacations or not available? I'm not sure. So those guys are already down there. They're already on vacation Florida. every day. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I got back. I'm, I'm good for a year. <laughs> She's had her dose of sleep. Well, I'm going tomorrow. So <laughs> where are you going? South Carolina. Um, I so, have snow there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, you want me to set something up end of the month, first part of April? What does everyone think? If we got additional data that we can analyze or look at, sure. Well, well I, I don't think, think this, would be this opportunity is to ask questions. To have time with Ted and ask questions of Ted and get, get you know, those, those make, you know, and as Andy well, said, I mean, the more information that we can give him before design phase, the better. Or do we present questions to him in written form and have him respond back to that? And then we can get together and ask him if we have further questions. Well, we could present him the questions ahead of time. That's fine if you want to do that. Yeah. That probably, well, I mean, we would possibly want to get together to, to write up the questions, right? 
Yeah, I we could do it. that, or we could do it through email. I mean, we can just start an email and just people copy everybody on questions. I in my notes, I kind of had like was writing them down, um, like I've kind of done in the other um, note, like a, so I can kind of maybe start that, and when I send out the minutes, I can we can take it out of that if that's what we want to do. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Yeah. Why don't we start with that? If we feel like we need to have a meeting to finalize those questions, we can do that. Okay. So let's at least start with email. Okay. Is Angie taking the lead on that? Sure. Oh, oh, oh Gary. <laughs> Thank she you. isn't close enough to hit you, is she? <laughs> no, I made sure of that. <laughs> Hey, Sean, did we buy that data logger yet? Yeah, we, it actually came in uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I think it was stuck on that that bridge coming from Canada because it came. They're in Canada, <laughs> so I just I got it a couple of weeks ago, and as soon as I saw is out, we're gonna we're gonna get it in. So, so I so noted that these quotes that you got is um, installing that data logger. Is, is part of that part of the quotes. So is that something that needs to get installed when this project is underway or before? No, we're gonna do it as soon as I sell, but we're gonna, we're, we can install it. Where is it gonna be installed at? I'd like to do it at the marina because it, it'd be the easiest. I haven't had time to go down there and look. Obviously yeah. it's gotta be in an area where, where it, it, I don't want, boat traffic at all but it, we we get the info from um bluetooth so i mean it'd be great if we could just if some security's down there it's easy access you know if in a flood event if we needed to get that that data you, you got to be somewhat close to it so i mean that's why i'd like to have it there rather There's than room between the, where the rental boats are parked in the big house yeah i was thinking there or in the far corner right behind the where the wood is kept mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I've got to go down there and take a look at it. Okay. Um, I mean, that corner would receive some way to, way of action, but like probably would not be the worst. Almost nothing. You're you're so far up that cove. Right. Is that in is that in some kind of a tube that mitigates the the wave action? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready to go on the capital budget allocation expenses to date? Well, back to this meeting deal. So if we submit these questions to them and then maybe we have a meeting toward the end of April, that gives them, that gives us several weeks here to get the questions together and gives them time to, to uh, work on it. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Mid to late April, by the time we, we can get ours formulated and get them to them and then give them time. Oh yeah, after, after April what? After 18? April 15th. <laughs> Next <laughs> time. <laughs> okay. So just to clarify, if Angie starts the email to all of us with question number one, then we just continue, continually reply to all with additional questions. Is that the way forward? Yes. Yes. That's what I'd like. Let's try that and see. And I think that can be effective to get at least a good idea. And if it works great, then we don't have to meet to finalize the questions. But if we're struggling, then we could still do that. But yes. And if you want to edit a question or add your own new question, do that to the email. But yeah. Okay. Sounds like a good place to start. Yeah. Capital budget. Ready to move on. So Sean, you, you sent this out today, this spreadsheet of where we spent to date, is there any way, like if I'm looking at 2021, well, any of those, 
it says who we paid to, but it doesn't say what we paid for. Is there a way to get that information? Yeah, I, mean, I can do that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. That would be helpful. You want that for the R&R, &R, the old stuff, or just for capital? Well, if you did it for both, that'd be great. Okay. Just see what this project's going to cost us and what we spend our money on. I, you know, this isn't just for us. I think this spreadsheet you put together has got to be highly transparent for anyone public wants to see it, our, our ownership at a point in time. Right. And I, I do have the question on 21, you got $11,834 to CMT. What, what is that large dollar amount for? That is going to be for the... I think it was one of the surveys we had them do. A, a was that the geotechnical engineering? Yeah, I would say probably that's going to include geotechnical engineering. Because that was really originally estimated at 10,000. But I mean, I think everything was... The 34, the 44. I forgot. I don't know. I, I tried to look back at old emails to see if I could make sense of the numbers, but I couldn't. Okay. I'll, I'll work I, on I, that. I tried to tie them to something, but I couldn't. Okay. I'll work on that. Sounds like an Ashley job. So right now we have 100,000, if I'm reading this right, 100,800, almost. A, that's not. A yeah, that's, a, that's an error. Yeah. What she, uh, Ashley's original had uh, also the dam inspections in here from Fairgram, but I took those out and I, I didn't realize that that number tied to uh, those dam inspections. So, so we have $75,000 we spent to date both in R&R &R and capital combined. That's correct. So just a quick estimate then based on current expenses and future expenses before even any kind of construction starts, we're probably gonna double that number, correct? Well, the original estimate was 171,000 for professional services. So triple it. Yeah. It's in, it's in the, the handout or the Sean sent out. Under well, it's a different services. amount for, for alternative one and alternative two. What's that? I didn't run. It was a different amount on number one yeah. and number two. Right, it was 148 on number one and 171 on number two, alternative two. This 100,000 should not be there. It's not there, yeah, okay. yeah, it's a mistake. So I, again, I'm sorry, I, 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 I need clarification. Again, on those alternative one and two, the, the price quotes, it says install level data logger. Is that something different than what you have already? Well, that's what we have. And I mean, it was just, that was just a, he, Ted wanted to suggest that we get that data logger so that we've got that. So he put that in the estimates. I'm not seeing that. I'm looking at something different, I guess. To, it's about in the middle of the, page is it install i see data logger but i don't see install go all the way up to the top it's in print raise top of dam to be level install lake level data logger oops i may have printed out the wrong thing no it's under table three there i see it oh it's under table three then he has the estimated cost at 5,000. So. I don't see a reason to, to have them install it and wait till construction to do that. We have it. 
installations not not difficult so again though to clarify that that's not potentially a different thing i thought i read someplace there's something potentially put in the dam itself i know we got servo servo they points there now but I, I thought there was a different way to potentially measure any shifting and height etc cetera, etc cetera, by something different this measure this measures the water level. water about yeah the dam. i don't remember anything about the dam no but you're right there are five monuments on top of the dam right now they they look like concrete uh or pillars with like a steel bar sitting in the middle of them yeah and we're required to have them surveyed once a year because of the class of the dam and i think they determined that the one side of the dam settled like an inch or something in the last 50 years. Last, yeah, 20 so years. Gary, on that $5,000, he wasn't sure what data logger we were gonna buy and whether or not we were gonna install it or where it would be installed would affect the cost of all that. And so we've kind of gone on the cheap side of this thing. Yeah, but there, I don't remember anything for the dam itself, Gary. I mean, somebody had thought that might be a location at one time. It could be, yeah. Okay. Actually, you probably don't want it anywhere near the dam because it's so remote compared to where right. security and everybody else is. Right. Might be even easier to put it over by the Cove uh, restaurant. And that could be too, yeah. That's where we got the 800-foot uh, yardstick on the concrete. Right. I think that the thought about putting it at the dam was that you could still have it remotely uh, monitored from some other area like security or something. And all that stuff was gonna add to the cost of this thing, which we didn't go that way. Right, that extent. Yeah, and when they put this, when these preliminary estimates were put together, and this was a year, be, year before we actually decided which data logger we're going with so you know we didn't know yeah. what we we're doing the only question might be is if we had a flood how easy is it to get to the data logger to, to record what it's re to get what it's recorded but it didn't over it sent it to it bluetooth yeah yeah but you've got to hit a button to, to, to it doesn't do it constantly you've got to do that so that's why I thought the marina might be a good spot for it. Yeah. So. I mean, somebody might have to put a set of boots on and walk over to it. But right, right. Gary, Gary will do that. Did Angie suggest that? <laughs> I was going to. Steve did it first. Thank you. <laughs> Henry, if you do it, you don't need boots. You're all wet already. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. That's the last time I buy you a beer. <laughs> Ready to move on? I think so. We're talking about beer, so I think it's time. Yeah. It's 77 degrees in South Carolina tomorrow. Wonderful. <laughs> 80 by Sunday. So we have on here new business reporting to the board of directors and next workshop. I, I'm not sure what is that. It's like we're asking when we're going to give our opinion next to the board of directors or. Yeah, I just, I put that on there just so that, I mean, more of a placeholder, just, I mean, at some point we're going to have to go back to them. Got it. For okay. A recommendation to move on to design. And if, I don't know if it's a workshop at that point to say, this is why we've chosen this or okay. if it's after we get the design and, and we present it to the board, I'm not quite sure, but uh, um, we're gonna have to go to the board with, with the, the quote on, on design at some point. Right. Okay. With the workshop, that's, uh, that would be that. Okay. So there's nothing, nothing to report on that at this point. Oh, I don't think at this point, there's no need for another workshop. There's yeah. no new, no new uh, info. Here, 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 if I may, Back up to the last concern, last page, page 14 of 14, almost the last paragraph. 
I'll read it. Wait. It says, are you looking at the 2022 or what are you looking at? I am looking at the CMT January 22 report. Yes. Page 14. Last page. 14 of 14. Last paragraph. Okay. It says, it should be noted that during the exploration of the dam embankment, it would be a good time to place instrumentation, I read that as data logger, in the dam to measure the water surface that exists in a dam. This type of instrument instrumentation can be installed in a conventional exploration borehole if desired. Good catch. Yeah, I, I, I believe that's the data logger they might be talking about. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, that what that sounds like is that they're talking about to see how far the water has infiltrated into the structure of the dam. Because if it was in a borehole, not continuous with the water level, it's not going to measure right. Yeah, they've never talked about this in the workshop, have they? Did they? I don't believe so. Yeah. That that's probably came from the uh, the soil uh, the soil fell. Would but that be I like said, a? I'm sorry. Would that be like a pesometer? You think? Put some pesometers in the the dam or around the dam to measure water coming through. It might be, but uh, I, from what I was told, when they built it, they 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 poured ceiling compound down the center of that dam. So I don't think we have to, too much to worry about there. Probably. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we don't have an issue with it. So, well, is that one yep. of our is that one of our questions then? I would think. Yes, what we, we, we could ask what they're talking about. Yeah. It also states that it might be required by a state agency. That's my question, Angie. <laughs> that I sounds wrote it down like for you. You're asking so, a lot today, Gary. What's required? Pardon? Am I missing something here? Aren't they supposed to know what's required? Yes. And here they say, if desired. Yeah, I think they're just saying if if you wanted to do that, it, it would it's a it would be a good time to do it. Um, I've never, I mean, DNR's never told us we need to have anything like that. And again, what information would it give us that benefits us? Well, here at Lake Carroll, they had 15 piezometers that we had to measure every month. And I mean, you drop down this, you know, something in it, this, this device and it would tell you how far down the water is. And then every year I had to turn those in with the, the dam inspection. So they drilled a hole in the dam. Well, there's a, a, in the dam and in other areas surround around the dam. So, um, so like here we do the settlement points. But yeah, there they did water. Yeah, almost. but I mean, Lake Carroll, a lot of water is going through that dam, so it was it was oh. important. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing that that might be what it is. I'm not quite sure, but I mean, it's a good question. So, I don't think we've ever had a problem here. Right. Right. I'm not sure that if you did that in one place, it would tell you a whole lot. I yeah. would think you'd have to have a number of them to, to know. I mean, if you're going to have a problem, it wouldn't happen all across the whole dam right. or at first. And I would think there'd have to be it's some up on, boring. you'd have to put probably some up on, uh, you know, on that Nixon point up there where we have that walkway now would be an area and then probably on the other side too. So, but again, I've never been told we need that, and we don't have an issue really with. I mean, losing the, the leakage we do have in the dam around the discharge pipe has been constant for the last thirty years. If there was a change in that, then I think something might be necessary. I agree. I didn't even know we had leakage. I forget what it is—a gallon every couple minutes or something. But it's been constant; it hasn't changed. Weird. Yeah, there's a weir down there that they measure every year. So, okay. 
So Henry, that would be the that would be the amount of water that's leaking through the dam or leaking through the pipe. It is thought that it's leaking from around the pipe. That when, when they sealed stuff, they didn't get it quite tight enough. And as long as it's not eroding anything at a, at a gallon, the rate that it is right now, and it hasn't changed, apparently it's not causing any problems. Now, if they'd go down there this year and discover it's 20 gallons at the same period, time period, then I think we'd have to start worrying. So my understanding is that pipe is a steel pipe encased in concrete and or something like that. And, you know, whether this is seeping around that pipe or or around it somehow, but it has the last and I forget when the last time I heard about this, it was. Uh, it had been the same for 20 years. Yeah, uh, the 2019 calendar had a picture of the pipe and the concrete. I believe it was the August. Most people don't realize what they're looking at. Oh. Hey, Gary, when you went scuba diving to look for it, did you have that picture to, as a reference point? No, I wish, I, wish we did, though. It, it, regardless, it was just too dark down there. We, we couldn't find it if we yeah. wanted to. Uh, I how, believe Sean has a copy of that picture. How far does that pipe extend, well, from the 800 level? How far, how far do you have to go from the surface of the lake to get down to it? The discharge pipe has a, a 24 foot, if I remember correctly, above the bottom of the lake. Above I'm the not bottom. sure how deep deep that makes it. Yeah, okay. It's, it's probably 40 feet down there. Because I've tried to find it on my fish locator before and I can never find it. Well, there's a, a grill on top of it, so the fish locator might be sensing right through the grill. It's oh. you know, it's not a solid surface. Got it. I, I, I'm oh. I'm guessing. At this yeah. Stage. The water level there is about 68 feet deep. So then it's probably 44 feet feet down. Yeah. Okay. Do we have anything else? I do not. No, no. So then the next meeting, uh, I guess we'll determine that. Angie's gonna sit out the minutes with her first, well, the questions that we've asked so far and should start a list and we'll add onto that list and get that compiled and then send it off to the engineer and then we'll meet accordingly. Sounds good. Sound good? Yep. Okay. Sounds like a plan. All right. Well, thanks all for joining in. Thanks for being there. It's 5.30. It's beer time. Got to go. <laughs> Who actually would issue a permit? It's the happy hour. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend. All right. Uh, thanks. DNR. Yeah. DNR? Yeah. Put the day. So the Army Corps of Engineers, they don't have anything.